But yeah, let's go ahead, let's go overhead, and I wanna show you guys everything you're gonna need for today's project. So, it's a little toasty in here. Um, <laughs> I brought hot. the convection oven in, so we're gonna be melting um, the wax in this convection oven. But I wanted to show you all everything else you're gonna need. So, outside of the oven, you're going to need two little Dollar Tree bowls. Y'all, these are just the glass bowls. That you can get at Dollar Tree and honestly these bowls are so nice just any like just for general use um, we're gonna be turning those into our candle I obviously have two of these tall votive candles right here and then um, to have the set trying to manage going back to school and still having to have time to craft oh I gosh. feel you Tabitha I feel you on that Okay, so I've got my scent right here. We're gonna do a peppermint candle today, but honestly, I told Lauren when she made this, I was like, this would be a perfect citronella candle. Like, I feel like I could see this that on my porch. So true. Yeah, don't you, wouldn't this that be cute? That would be so cute, because it has the stone elements, very yes. earthy. Yes, exactly. Love that. Um, and then I've got just some scissors, some jute twine. You all can get this at the Dollar Tree. I don't think this is from there, but the Dollar Tree definitely has it. I've got, um, clothespins. I have some tweezers. I've got a little popsicle stick, a weeding tool. I've got black vinyl and leather. This is going to be for our tag that we're going to put on our candle. Y'all know we love a good little leather craft over here. I've got a light grip mat and honestly I would probably use like a standard grip mat but this is like a really sticky light grip mat so I'm going to be using that. I've got some JB Weld that stinks so bad. <laughs> disgusting. It smells so bad. <laughs> if you guys have never used JB Weld, it is so stinky and I just, I hate the smell of it. It's terrible and it gets on your hands and it's just not fun. Just hold but, your breath. Yeah, and just hold your breath, but it works well for what we need it for. Um, I've got some dowel rods. Really, you're just going to need one or two depending on how many wicks that you do in your candle. And then I've got our precision tip um, glue gun here. I've got this little Cricut mini easy press for our tag. And then I brought this in here just in case we get any sinkholes in our um, wax. And if you all have never made candles before, let's go um, to camera one. If you all have ever made candles before, I have made them, I made them a couple years ago and it was the first time I had made them. And what happened was I put my wax in there and honestly, y'all may know better than me why this actually happens, but like a lot of times you'll put your wax in and when it starts to cool, it'll create like a little funnel or like a little hole in your wax. All you have to do when that happens is run this over that top layer of wax and everything will level out. So it's a pretty easy fix, but that's why I brought this in here. So are y'all ready to get started? Yeah. Um, okay, so what I wanna do first is I'm going to let my oven preheat. I don't think it's, I don't think it's entirely preheated yet. But what you're going to want to do, um, this craft really doesn't take super long after you've glued your bowls together and all of that. So when you go on the day that you're going to be putting your wax into your bowls, um, you're going to go ahead and preheat your oven at 250. So we want a low temp. We do not want a high temp because we don't want to risk busting the glass on these candles. Um, so we're going to do 250 and I'm going to let that preheat for a minute. And then what you're going to do this is the day before, so the day before you start doing this actual candle craft, we need to adhere our bowls together with JB Weld. The reason we want to do it the night before is because it needs to sit 24 hours in advance. So I'm going to go ahead and move all this stuff out of the way, except for our bowls and our JB Weld. So let me get this stuff out of the way. And this is going to be the, the stinky part, but you know, it's a, it's a part of it. The things we do for our craft, y'all, the things we do. So I'm gonna move all this out of the way. And honestly, I don't know if you guys got a really good view of the candle on the thumbnail, but like, look at this, look at it. It is literally stunning. I wish you guys could feel what this feels like. If you've never used that spray paint before, it actually feels like stone. It looks like stone. Yes, it's so, I don't feel like I showed this ingredient. This is like very important. Okay, this is the Rust-Oleum Multicolor Textured um, spray paint and I want to say there's a color listed on here somewhere but it looks like how the lid looks so it just gives you this like really nice stone finish and this looks like something I would it 
feels like something I would buy at like Pottery Barn or West Elm or something it like that. It literally does. Yeah, it's so, so nice. This is a very Lauren craft. Like if I saw this and they were like, who made that, Alicia or Lauren? I'd be like, Lauren. I know she <laughs> made this. All the way. This is her style, totally, and I love it. So I'm gonna set this to the side. And what you're gonna need are your two bowls. I'm gonna flip them over and you're gonna wanna remove the tags. So I'm just gonna take my heat gun. If you haven't learned this hack before, I'm gonna heat these up with the heat gun to remove all of the stickers. This is a great hack, especially if you buy like picture frames and stuff. Like TJ Maxx is the worst, y'all. Oh when my they, gosh, <laughs> those stickers are the death of me. I know, and they put them on everything and like right in the very front of Literally. the frame. So I mean, I get why they do it, but. So just heat it up and then I'm gonna take my weeding tool to kind of pull it off. And usually they'll come off pretty good. Dollar Tree is actually pretty good with their stickers. They're not super tacky. Sue said, okay, that is why you're getting sinkholes. It is the paraffin wax, and that wax is known for sinkholes. Oh. oh, Sue is a pro candle maker. This whole time, Sue, I didn't even oh. know that about you, and you've been here forever. Sue. Okay, so the wax is going to depend on if you get sinkholes or not. How do I know if it's paraffin wax or not? I would love to know that. Okay, look, y'all. Oh, my gosh. Like butter. Like butter. That's life changing. Yes, honestly. it really is. We're gonna do this one. And listen, if there's ever any adhesive left on, like whatever you pull the sticker off of, get some rubbing alcohol. Or what works even better is real lemon oil or like the juice of a lemon. It'll get it right off. I love a good life hack, you know? <laughs> okay, we're gonna pull these off. Look at that, okay. Now, the next step is gonna be for us to attach these using our JB Weld. So, let's just look here. So this JB Weld, it says Minute Weld Instant Setting Epoxy. Um, it says instant setting, but y'all are gonna have to let this sit for like overnight because it takes forever to dry um, and it, the bowls will slide around. Like, you just, you wanna let it sit, it's gonna be better. Um, surface must be clean and dry it says thoroughly mix colors until color is uniform and apply immediately. So let me, I'm just gonna put like a little paper towel down right here. And then I'm gonna pop this off and it takes me a second to get it off. So we're just gonna put a little bit down on our paper towel. And you can see it comes out in two different colors. There's like a yellow tinge and a clear tinge and I'm just gonna mix those together. And then what we're gonna do, we're not gonna put it, can y'all see this? Yes. You're not gonna put it right here in the middle. You're gonna put it around this edge because y'all may not be able to see it very well, but these bowls have a slight lip on this bottom edge. So we need the edges of them to be touching really well. So I'm just gonna take this and I really do not want this to drip down my bowl so make sure that you're being generous but not too generous because it's hard for, to get this jb weld off of whatever surface it touches it's hard to get it off of your hands um, so i'm just going to kind of apply this all the way around you could use a paintbrush if you felt like that would be easier too and make sure you're in a well ventilated area this stuff just stinky so stinky and, but it's very strong. So like a little bit's gonna go a long way. And I would make sure after we put these, after we attach them together, make sure that it's not dripping anywhere. And if it, if it is, make sure to wipe it up and clean it up really well. Lindsay is asking, would E6000 work or does it need to be JB Weld? I feel like E6000 would work. Um, Lauren, she may want to speak on that, but I feel like it would work too. The JB Well, I don't know which one is stronger. JB Well feels like it would be stronger to me and like more substantial, if that makes sense. And then look, we're just gonna sit this right on top of here. You just wanna make sure it's centered and make sure it's gonna stay. And then you're gonna sit that to the side and don't touch it. For 24 hours, don't put it anywhere where your kids can get it. Don't get it where your dog can get it. Just let it sit. I'm gonna scooch it over. And then the next day, 
when it's dry, you're gonna be able to go ahead and spray paint it and looky. Oh Voila. my gosh. <laughs> it's beautiful. It is, it is. So um, I wanna show you all the mistakes that I made on this one though. So I did glue this yesterday and I put too much glue. That was my first problem. I put too much glue on this. And I thought that with this textured spray paint, that if I didn't wipe it up, I could just cover it up. I was wrong. Yikes. Yeah, so this is why I want you all to make sure if you do get any on your bowl that you're cleaning it up because look, those drips right there are like dripping. And it absorbed my paint differently than the glass did. And so you can tell an obvious difference. Um, from the front, this is still cute and gorgeous and that's totally fine, but I just want y'all to be careful whenever you're doing that. So make sure you're not doing too much um, and make sure you're cleaning it up as you go and especially before you actually go to apply the paint. So what I want you all to know also about the paint, once your bowls are completely dried and it's paint day, it's the next day, it's been 24 hours, take this outside to a well ventilated area. You're gonna spray one coat on the inside of the bowl and all the way around the outside, let it dry for 10 to 15 minutes. You do not wanna go in heavy on the layers of paint on this because it will drip. I think it's, oh, we're preheated. <gasps> Yay. Oh wait, I think it might've turned off, hold on. Oh. So like I was saying, you're gonna paint one coat on the inside, one coat on the outside, let it dry 10, 10 to 15 minutes. And then you are going to apply a second coat, same thing, light coat. You're gonna let, let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes Third coat, same thing. Fourth coat, same thing. And honestly, y'all, five coats is probably gonna be where you wanna live because this is three coats, this is five coats, and this looks better like paint-wise than this one. And I feel like Warren probably did four or five coats on this, if I had to guess. Let's say that we've already painted everything. We've done all five coats of our paint um, and it is completely dry, so we've got this completely dry right here. Um, we want to preheat our oven before we hop onto Design Space, so we've got it at 250 and it's preheating. And now what we're gonna do while that preheats, we're going to go ahead and work in Design Space on our tag. So let me go ahead and get Design Space up and running. I am in Design Space. Let's go ahead and just make a new, let's make a new canvas. Starting fresh. Yeah, we're gonna start fresh. So I'm just going to go over here and pull this little basic shape and y'all, you can make your tag whatever, whatever shape that you want. Now for size purposes, we may want to make this a very specific size. So I'm going to say we probably don't want it any bigger than like three inches. I feel like any bigger than three inches is going to be too big. So let's just do, I don't know, 2.75, I feel like that's good. Um, 2.27, I don't know what I was doing there, 2.75. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go ahead and change this to our brown color because we're using like a pretty brown tan leather. I'm gonna zoom in. And I love this shape, y'all. Just so you know, if you are a member already, we have all of these shapes on our website now. So the all of the basic shapes are available for you all if you need them. And then on our tag, what we're gonna do is put the scent that we actually put into the candle. So my candle's gonna be peppermint today. Lauren, I think the first one was Stitcher's Fresh. I didn't smell it. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do peppermint today though. Let's see, peppermint. I love a peppermint scent. Peppermint That's just is me. so good. Are you, do you like a peppermint? It's, it's a year, a year round smell for me. I, I love agree. It. It's very therapeutic. And it honestly, is. honestly, my dad growing up, my dad hated peppermint scented things. So like me and my mom would have to sneak and do peppermint scented. Oh my God. <laughs> we would do it when he wasn't home because y'all know there's like a bath and body twisted peppermint candle smell. Yes. And it's my favorite. It smells so good. Okay, so I'm going to pick a font and I'm just going to go ahead and tell y'all that I'm obsessed with this orange leaf font right now. This is a Maker's Going to Learn font. Okay, it's, this font is amazing. It reminds me of California. It's so trendy. Yes, it's so cute. It's very like modern vintage. Yes. I feel like. And then I'm just going to center this 
And then honestly, y'all, if you were like gifting this or something, this would be a really cool opportunity for you to put a personalized note on this, like happy birthday, or this would be a perfect housewarming gift. Yes, like you could would. put happy housewarming or that'd be so cute. I don't know. Something, yeah, something cute like that. So we're just going to stick with the flavor today. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and add a little hole on here so we can officially make this a tag. We're going to shrink it down. It doesn't need to be super small. And then I'm just going to make sure everything is lined up. I like to line things up as I'm designing them just so I can kind of keep my visual clear. And I'm going to bump this hole down just a smidge too. You want to make sure you've got enough area up here to where it's not going to like tear if it gets tugged on or something like that. Um, but yeah, what do y'all think? Is that cute? Is that cute? Is Courtney here? I don't know. I was just looking. Tina said Courtney. Courtney, if you're here, Maybe she thinks hello. I'm Courtney. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this looks cute though, right, Sadie? Yeah. I feel like we're good. Okay. It's cute. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to need to attach my hole to my tag. So I'm just going to click and drag and select both of those. And you can technically just like slice it out if you wanted to and just delete all those. And then we can make sure, send this to back, make sure everything is exactly how we want it. And then what we're going to do is go to make it. So you can see our tag is right here and then we've got our peppermint right here. And y'all, this is tiny. We are using HTV for this. If you are not familiar, adhesive vinyl is just, it's already sticky. HTV, you've got to apply heat for it to activate the adhesive on the back. When we're working with really small text like this, you're going to want to work with HTV. It's a lot easier to weed. If I tried to weed this with an adhesive vinyl, no thank you. I would be like stressing <laughs> out. So since this is HTV though, we cut it from the back side. So we're going to want to mirror our image. I feel like my oven's turning off. Nope, it's still on. I'm so glad. That oven is very finicky sometimes. It is. It is. And honestly, I think it's user error most of the time, but it, it's <laughs> it probably <okay>. is. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so I have mirrored my HTV. We don't need to mirror our leather. We're just going to keep it as is. And then go ahead and select continue. In design space, I'm going to select everyday iron on as our cut setting. We're just going to leave it on default pressure. And then if we can go overhead, let me get this JB Weld lid back on. This stuff is just not, not the mood. It's so stinky. Marva, we are using a convection oven from Walmart today. It's yes. the Gourmia brand, French Doors. You can look it up on the Walmart website. Yes, if it's not sold out, sometimes it's sold out. But y'all, you can use your regular oven for this. Like you can just use a regular oven. It's not a big deal. So I'm gonna put my HTV on shiny side down and I'm going to burnish this really good and like I said earlier you're probably going to want to use a standard grip mat when you're cutting leather or really HTV. Light grip is great mainly for paper projects. This is a really sticky light grip mat and if you know anything about me you know I don't pick my <laughs> mats based on their color. I just pick them based on how they feel. Okay and then we're just going to load this in. We're using an Explore 3 today. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stick these in the oven while we're waiting because, so I've got it at 250. 10 to 15 minutes should be enough time for us. So we're going to pop this open and be very careful not to touch anything. Okay. It's about to get real toasty in here. It's about to get real toasty. And, and um, make sure, I said, this, I said this at the top of the show, but you want to melt these at a low temp. And when I say low temp, I mean 250 degrees. You don't want to go much higher than that. I've seen a couple of people do it at 300 for like five minutes, but 250 at 10, 15 minutes feels safer for me. Like I do not want them to explode in here. You know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, please don't. <laughs> yeah, we're not. Lauren has had a bad time with this um, convection oven. I don't oh know if y'all have heard goodness. the story about it catching on fire. We have to post that as a blooper sometime. Okay, so I've got my little peppermint right here. I'm gonna go ahead and weed it, and y'all, this is the tiniest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's so small. There's like glue on the tip of this uh, <laughs> oh weeding tool. Let me grab a different weeding tool really quick. 
So I'm just going to weed all of this out. Like I said, if y'all try to do this, if you try to do this with permanent adhesive vinyl, good luck. Something this small is just, honestly, I wouldn't do it unless I was doing HTV. And I wouldn't do it unless I was using Caesar Easy Weed either, to be honest with you. It is superior. It's 1, superior. 1,000%. It really is. <laughs> Okie dokie. It's so tiny. It's little. Okay, now we need to cut our leather. <clears throat> so this is paper thin leather, which is great because it cuts with a fine point blade. I'm just going to put this right up here in the top corner. I should have brought my brayer in here. A brayer is really good. It's like a rolly pin and it helps everything to stay down. I'm actually going to tape the edges of this down because I don't want it to move. I've gotten better about the amount of things that I tape to my mat. Y'all know I used to tape everything to a mat. Do you remember when I used, yes. <laughs> I used to get nervous that everything would move, so I would just tape it all down. Um, but with leather, since it, with thicker materials, you kind of want to make sure that they're not going to, like, come up during the cutting process or anything like that. I mean, it's better safe than sorry. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, yes, if you, um, if you have signed up for Makeathon, the supply list has went out. Yes. Um, there's going to be tons of prizes being given away, like really, really good prizes. Y'all know we do not skimp on giveaways. <laughs> literally, like, literally. <laughs> Our giveaways are incredible. Yes, they They're always so are. Good. Tanner is a giver. He likes to really, like, show up. He's so generous. Yes. So... Okay, I've taped this down pretty good. If I were being a good crafter girl, I would have used a stronger grip mat, but here we are. Okay, <laughs> and then now we're going to slide this on in. Okay, let's go back into design space and change our cut settings. So right now we're on everyday iron on. I want to change this to faux leather. Okay, there's faux leather paper thin right here okay it's gonna excuse me it's gonna measure our mat and then we can cut it okay so our little tag cut out how cute is he i'm gonna pop this off i've got a little bit of tape up here on my edge and y'all there's our little tag and now we're just gonna go ahead and apply our HTV to our tag. I'm gonna check on these candles real quick. Let's see how they're doing. Are they melting? They don't look like they're melting, you guys. This is a crazy question, but does wax burn at any point? I don't know. I would think not, I would think no. I wouldn't think so either. I don't even know if it was, I feel like it had turned itself off. This Evan, shoe law. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just line our scent up right here in the middle, making sure it's as straight as it can be. Okay. And then I'm just going to put, I've got a mini easy press right here. I'm just going to put this on the second setting and let that heat up. And I'm going to also go ahead and turn my hot glue gun on so it is nice and toasty so that we can glue our wicks to the bottom of our candle. Now, we were talking earlier about if it would be better or smarter to use like a super glue for our wicks or if it would be better to use um, like a hot glue. Our biggest concern with the hot glue is that it's gonna get like the wax is gonna heat up and it's gonna get hot and like that's true. Pop. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, so it'll like come undone. And I haven't burned one of these candles all the way down to the bottom, so I don't know for sure if. I don't know for sure if it would pop off, if that makes sense. So, anyways, if y'all know, let me know, because we're going to hot glue them today. I don't feel like I would burn this all the way down to the bottom anyways, so I don't feel like I'll run into that issue, but if y'all know, let me know. Oh, man, that's funny. Okay, I think, so I feel like the oven wasn't completely hot. Oh, they're melting now. They're melting. Yay. Okay, we've got it. plenty of time. We're going to let those heat up a little bit. Our um, Easy Press is heated up, and we know it's ready because it's green. 
And we're just gonna apply a little bit of heat to this. And it doesn't take a lot, y'all. No, it's so fast. It really is. Okay. We're just gonna delicately peel that off. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, look how cute. That is adorable. Love I love it. That. Okay, so now that we've got our little tag, and y'all, I put so much JB Weld on this candle. <laughs> on the one I did earlier, on the one I did yesterday, the one I showed y'all today is the correct amount. Um, but my JB Weld is trying to like come out from between my bowl. So make sure y'all don't put too much. Um, while our wax is still heating up, we can go ahead and put our tag on here. So I'm just going to take some of this jute rope and we're just going to guess how much we need. I don't know. What is that? Like 24 <laughs> inches? <laughs> and then we're just going to tie this in the front. I'm just going to tie it like that first. And then I'm going to string our little tag on here. Okay, maybe. Oh, these are melting. I wish y'all could see this like more closer up. Anyways, so I've got, I'm going to let those keep melting and I'm trying to think if there's anything else we can do before like we continue on. I feel like that's pretty much it. I'm going to move this to the side and actually y'all, this bowl, this bowl that we glued just a minute ago already feels more welded than the one that I did yesterday. Oh my gosh. And I think the problem was that I put too much on it yesterday. So that'll do it. Make sure you don't have too much. Make sure you don't have too much. So um, y'all can get these different scents off of Amazon. So this is this brand is Country Lane. It says liquid candle and soap fragrance. This is peppermint, and I think um, we have like a cinnamon scent out there as well and then like a citrus fresh. And I think you can use essential oils in these um, as well. Not all, I don't think you can use all essential oils, but yeah, so I would, I would think the heat would probably melt that bottom candle too. Yes. So it's like bubbling up in there, y'all. Okay, let's go ahead and pull these out. I'm just gonna pull them out one at a time. I'm gonna let the other one kind of sit in here for a minute. Just be so careful. And you have to tilt these to the side just a little bit to get them out. But this wax, <clears throat> it's like whipped candle wax. So it looks like whenever it's melted. So you can see it looks like <laughs> we've lost wax. But this is, um, it's like got a filler in it basically. And so whenever it melts down, it kind of condenses. And so... I'm wondering if it's going to allow me to get my little wick out of there. <gasps> what is that? <laughs> that's just, <laughs> the wax hasn't entirely melted. Oh. So that's why, but we need our little wiki. We need our little wiki out of there. So we're going to have to let this melt a little bit more before we do that. Because I don't think that it's going to be able to come off. And y'all, you can buy, um, you can buy just the wicks on their own. That way you've just got them on hand. You don't have to reuse the wicks that come in the candles, but I'm going to stick this back in and we're going to let it melt to the bones. <laughs> we are almost there. So this actually took a little bit longer. I was thinking a maximum of 15 minutes, but it's been in here for about 18 minutes. Do you think it would make a difference if we put it in a regular oven? It could, but you know, I was thinking, I was brainstorming this earlier because if you, I mean, regardless of if you use a convection oven or a real oven, the real oven, if it says it's 250 degrees and the convection oven says it's 250 degrees, it's like the same amount of heat, yes. if that makes sense. So I don't know. I wouldn't think that it would matter. You have a heat gun to help melt the wax from the wick. Do y'all think that the heat gun will melt it faster than the oven? I mean, oh. we can try. We can try it. We can do a test. Yeah, we'll try. Let's see what happens. If it doesn't work, I'm putting it back in here. I'm not going to get it out. 
So whenever we have to pull it to the side in the convection oven, it's not going to spill any wax out. And nice. I did lay down a piece of butcher paper just in case. I was worried about that when you were taking it out. I was like, is it going to spill? <laughs> not today. Can y'all see this? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> this is for all you people who wanted me to use a heat gun. It's working. We just don't want to get super close. <laughs> oh my gosh. So a heat gun, I swear, this is probably, a heat gun is one of the crafting tools that I never knew I needed. And I just feel like it, I use it for so many different things in the craft room. Like things I, I would never have thought, yeah, I might need that one day to melt my wax off my wick. You know? <laughs> <laughs> This is working, y'all. So we're just melting this off. The other one's probably almost melted in the oven by now. So we're just double timing it, you know? And I've already got my hot glue gun on and ready to go so that I can actually attach these um, wicks to the bottom of our candle. I can see, I can see the edge of this. Here we go, here we go. <gasps> ah! <laughs> Okay, it worked, everybody. That was impressive. Yes, that's very hot. I'm not going to touch that. Okay, so we're going to actually be doing two wicks in here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to put a little dot of glue right here. And I've heard some people even said to use... Um, just like some of their candle wax to adhere the wicks, which I think is a really good idea. It is a good idea. So we're just going to attach that one. And when the other one comes out, I'm going to show you where these dowel rods come in handy. So there's a couple different ways um, that you can do this. You can do it the closed pin way, which would require the, both of these little dowels. And what you would do is clip this and then you would have the two dowels to kind of hold it up and you can pull it taut so it's tighter. And that way it would just sit straight up. Or you can literally just take this dowel and wrap it around. Just wrap it around. <laughs> I've heard that TikTok <laughs> audio. <laughs> I'm gonna do a wrap around. I'm just gonna do a wrap around, <laughs> just a quick wrap around. And you can just literally twist it like this. And honestly, I wanted it to stay really good. I could just use my little paper, my little clothespin. Boom. Yes. Okay. Oh, guys, it's melted. It's all the way melted. Let's oh pull gosh. it out. It is. The moment of truth. And so you don't want to pull them out like and let them sit for too long because the wax will start to harden. I'm going to go ahead. And you can see that first one I pulled out is already trying to solidify but it's not it's still liquid we're going to go ahead and pull this out i'm going to sit this here and we need to add a little dab of glue and then we're just going to attach our other wick parallel to our other one that we've already put in okay and then you're just going to wrap it around keeping it as straight as you can. And I'm just gonna secure this one too with this. You don't really have to, it'll pretty, it stays pretty well on its own. Okay, I'm gonna keep it just like that. So our wicks are attached with hot glue. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my, uh, some scent drops in here. And that way it kind of mixes as I'm pouring it. Don't be shy. <laughs> don't be shy, put some Don't more. be shy. And then I can use, oh, Sue says not to spin too fast when you're mixing the scents together because it will cause bubbles, which can create our sinkholes. Now, ooh, I can smell it. It smells so good, y'all. It smells delicious. Okay, I am going to grab this one first because it's starting to harden, and I just want to go ahead and pour this in. Well, that's satisfying. 
<laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> okay, we've got one in, and then let's go ahead and put our other one in. Here we go. Wow. Now, if you guys were doing colored and you wanted to do like stacks of different colors, you're going to want to make sure that they are drying in between your layers of colored wax. But we're just doing all white, and so that's just going to sit and dry. And I'm going to keep my wicks like that until it is completely dry. And that is it. We'll have to snip our, snip our little wicks. We'll see if it can dry for a minute while we're sitting here. Um, but y'all, this is just such a cute little craft. Um, so this is probably not going to dry while we're here. Um, but what you would do, you need to let it completely dry, okay? And then you're just going to remove your pins. You're going to unwrap your wicks from your dowel rod, and you're just going to take scissors and trim them. And I'm going to show you the finished product right here. So you can see how these wicks, they've just been trimmed. They're about an inch, an inch above the surface. And that's it, you all. That is it. Is so anyone... perfect. It's I know. So I love it. I love it. And such a cute little gift or just home decor item. So um, if y'all don't have any more questions.